this afternoon. Are we ready for some good singing? Amen. Are we ready for some good speeches? Amen. Well, we are all we have here today for you. So, this year is our second annual multicultural celebration. And so, we wanted to stay true to um, the African American culture. And so, this year, we're going to celebrate diversity and multiculturalism within our community. And so one way that we are very multicultural is in the way we worship and the types of songs we sing during that worship. And so today we're going to just enjoy, enjoy our diversity in, in worship and in song. Is that all right? Amen. So that being said, we're going to go on and start our program because we want to be timely. And so we're going to start off with the host church. We thank God for Dr. Hatcherson who's hosting us today. So we're going to start off with the host church and they're going to come bless us in what we call praise and worship, which is a form of singing that we do in our community. Is that right? Amen. So let's just open up our hearts to receive their presentation today. Thank you. 
Martin, who is a member of CAC. Our welcome by Ms. Velma Williams, who is a member of CAC. And our occasion by Ken Mr. Kenneth Richardson, who is also a member of CAC. Can you all come in that order, please? Thank you. Please. Lord, I want to say thank you for gathering us here today to not only celebrate black history, but to, uh, everyone today with our multicultural celebration. As we sit here today, I ask you to bless us with your grace and with your presence as these talented groups perform for us, and I ask you to give them the strength and the courage as they stand amongst us. I pray that you allow not only them, but us, to rejoice in your name and to celebrate in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. To all that make up this assembly, I am Bill Williams, and it is my pleasure and my honor to welcome you to the Birmingham Community Affairs Committee's annual multicultural program. CAC is a not-for-profit organization that works to eliminate racism wherever it is found by focusing on three major areas, education, transportation, and homelessness. Today's program is honoring the melting pot of cultures that comprise our great living space called America, and specifically Birmingham. A character named William Cumbree in a 1697 play, The Morning Bride, said, Music has charms to soothe the savage beast. So we invite you to sit back, relax, and prepare to be entertained, educated, and soothed by the melodic sounds of gospel, traditional hymns of old, contemporary music, folklore, and all melodies that touch our hearts and spirits. This will be a transformational experience that will come in your worldview to be more accepting of cultures and to know how they are interconnected. We, the members of CAC, thank you for coming out to share with us this afternoon, and we trust that you will be totally entertained and move to action to eradicate racism by starting with the man or the woman in the mirror. We ask that before you leave that you stop by the music stand in the rear and that you rest you so that we may continue to add to our digital platform for our membership and for our guests. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. To the pastor, the leader of this block, and all the church officers in the house. On behalf of our executive director, of Community Affairs Committee. We commemorate, we commemorate this, the legacy, culture, and traditions of multicultural awareness. We hope that you will gain a deeper understanding of each other, recognize and honor the diversity surrounding us all. So let's sit back and see what the Multicultural Committee has in store for us. of CAC and before I go further I would just like our chair of this committee to please stand and just wave at the people. This is Attorney Chair today. So this is her idea and all of her co-chairs, Ms. Madeline Washington and Mr. Hans Petrochek. Can y'all things new and fresh, right? And so we thank them for this idea this morning, this afternoon. And, and two other people I would like to acknowledge. As you can see on the program, we have Mr. Paul Ellis. Can you wave for us, Mr. Paul Ellis? Mr. Paul Ellis is our sign language and 
interpreter, but God has blessed us to have three in the house. And so we also like to acknowledge Amber Watt Robinson. those services are able to enjoy the program as well. It's a multicultural committee thoughtful. Okay, so next we, we understand that in our community we you know we show expression so many different ways and so one form of music that we also use is um what we call spirituals our spirituals and so today we have and we're so happy to have them Carver Hudson performing choir to come and sing two of those spirituals for us. Now let me say, they are also a nonprofit organization of young people. You all see those beautiful young people? <laughs> and so if you look on the back of the program, there's a QR code. The QR code is placed there so that you all will be able to go, you know, at, a, at now or later and read about not only the churches who are involved with us today, but also these nonprofit organizations. And the nonprofit organizations and just a little more information, and that is a way that you can give, that you can bless their organization, so that the good work that they do can continue. So please, in your time, can you access the QR code so that we can bless these young people? And at this time, we will ask Carla, the choir, to please come bless us. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
The question that BB had, though, was why, of all the 150 songs, is this the last one? Why is this the one the book ends with? So, she did what we tell our children to do all the time. She asked her teacher. Rev. Shlomo Karabach, her teacher, a man who, for those who might not know, has had a massive influence on Jewish liturgical music until his death in 1994, though many of his teachings continue to be used today. Rev. Shlomo replied that the Book of Psalms itself is a book brimming with emotions. If you read through it, you get every feeling we humans experience, from the deepest depths of fear and despair, to the triumph of victory, to faith and hope, and everything in between. At some point, though, Reb Shlomo taught, words fail us. For 149 psalms, we verbally express to God everything we might feel. But there are some feelings we can't express. Some things that, no matter how much we try, we can't find the words to say. When we get to that point, we sing. Music can express what our words can't. Psalm 150 concludes the book with musical praise to acknowledge those things we can't say any other way. There's a reason Jewish mystics believe that nigunim, wordless melodies, and dancing were the highest form of praise we could offer God. It's because we don't think about it. We're not struggling to find the right words, or for those of us like Jews who have more fixed liturgy, we don't try to find the meaning in the words on the page. There are no words. Only what our hearts and our souls need to express. Sometimes we sing in joy about the gifts God gave us. Sometimes we dance with our yearning, with our loneliness, with our anxiety or our hopes. And sometimes, as Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel writes, we find ways to transform our sorrow into songs of healing. May that be the spirit in which we sing today and we sing throughout our lives. Music is not just about the beat and the rhythm and the melody and the harmony. It's about our hearts and our souls. It's about expressing all the things we have no words to express. It's about living out the very last line of the book of, the book of Psalms and of Psalm 150. Kol haneshama tahalelia Let each soul with whatever feeling is deep within it, praise and sing to God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Honor to Pastor Hatcherson and our other platform guests. Uh, Dr. Kayla Ward, Attorney Ch Charity, Attorney Charity Davis and the co-chairs and other notables. I've been blessed to be here so far. I'm Pastor James Ewans of the Ephesus Seventh-day Adventist Church. And that church has been around for over 100 years. Now, I'm not 100 years old, amen. <laughs> I'm, uh, take note, take note, I'm 57 years old, but take note, just 57 years old, amen. Just 57 years old. Well, I uh, am glad to be here, and I've been at the church there for almost two years, and I'm always excited to meet other people and, and visit other churches as well and connect uh, with one another because I believe that we are in here and we all love the Lord. Amen, somebody. Amen. And we as a church there at Ephesus, we want to be known more for than what we teach, but we want to be known for how we connect with other people as well. Now, how many know that uh, music is a gift from God? Yes. How many know that black music is a gift from God? Yes. The African who became the Africans who became slaves used music, 
not only as a way to encourage their traumatized hearts, but as a way to plan their escape. They use songs as codes. They call them signal songs. And songs about where to meet were called map songs. An example of some of the signal songs are still away, still away. Yeah, amen. Help me somebody. And we know that it had a dual meaning. It meant going to heaven. But it also meant escaping and stealing away from slavery and having a better life. And then we know that song, wait in the water, wait in the water, children. Mm -hmm. I'm just testing my voice a little bit. <laughs> now, now, if they, legend has it, Harry Tubman told the, uh, the, 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 the fellow slaves that if they thought they were being followed, to get in the water, wade in the water, to throw the bloodhounds off your scent. Wade in the water. And so as I get ready to close, if you feel like the bloodhounds of life are chasing you down, I mean edging on you, you feel like that? Then I'll stop by and tell you, wade in the water. How many of you know that Jesus is the water? Yeah. Wade yeah. in the water. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I bring you greetings from the Cathedral Church of the Advent downtown. We have taken our place among downtown Birmingham since its very inception in 1872. One of the longest standing churches in our wonderful city and greetings on behalf of the right reverend dean uh, craig smalley and it's it's wonderful to be a part of events like this that showcase the talent the natural charisma and uh and abilities and efforts of people in our great community and city Amen. just to add on what has been said here is where did the slaves come up with such a wonderful way to express their desire for freedom but from the holy scriptures and as we know god's people yearned and longed for freedom from oppression under pharaoh and egypt and they cried out and the lord brought them in deliverance from that slavery, enslaved position of oppression into the land of promise. And as they crossed over the, the Red Sea and they came over, they started to sing that great song. And Miriam and the women, it says, took out tambourines, right? They took those tambourines and they started to play them and they started to sing about the victory their Lord God had brought on behalf of them. And so that is a great tradition in the African-American spiritual tradition. And we're so thankful for that hymnody and wonderful work that continues to sing forth, opening our mouths and moving our bodies and using instrumentation and music for the freedom from oppression, freedom for people who are experiencing pain. It has been a balm in Gilead indeed for God's people over the generations. And of course, God has always been about bringing deliverance, bringing freedom. He's put that desire inside of every human being because we're all made in His image. And we have that familiar passage for us in the prophet Isaiah chapter 61, which Jesus of Nazareth went into a synagogue in the first century Palestine and He unrolled this scroll and read from it. And He said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant those who mourn in Zion and give them beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness planting of the Lord, that He may be glorified. And in this way, we are um, echoing that ancient song for freedom, of deliverance. Um, under God's gracious banner, He is good and joyful and loving towards His creation. May we continue to stand against such things in our own day.
and set forth a path of freedom using music and these expressions. Amen. Amen. today. And so the next thing we want to turn our hearts and minds to is another, another form of music that we use within our culture, and that's instruments. We praise them with the instruments. And so today we have been blessed to have a young man with us, Mr. Nick. Mr. Nick is going to come along with his father, and Mr. Nicholas is also a part of a non-profit organization that works with young people who wish to learn to play instruments and they're not necessarily going to learn in the school environment. And so we would love for his father to talk to you about Nicholas, along with uh, the selection he's going to play, and ask his father, can you all say what he's going to play? Because I can't pronounce it. And so his father's going to come and just speak to us. Also behind that QR code is um, the name of Nicholas's nonprofit organization, and there's an opportunity for you to bless them as well. Mr. Alexander. Amen, amen. Thank you so much. Nicholas plays with an organization. Um, it's uh, um, Scroll Works. And Nicholas is on the autism spectrum. He, um, his behavior problem made it very difficult to find a teacher for him with music. We saw he had an early interest in it. And quite a few years ago, we met the individuals from Scroll Works. And Scroll Works provided him with a teacher. Um, Miss Molly and provided him also where he learned to play the cello and is learning the piano and, um, and an opportunity to play with an orchestra. And, um, so we are so blessed to meet Miss Ward and so blessed to meet so many people on this journey with him. Um, very limited, he speaks very little, but his, his cello has been his friend throughout. So he's going to play an orchestra piece called La Cinquantaine. And it's um, a French wedding song. And, all right, uh, all right. He, he's going to play that, and uh, I would just hope that you all um, enjoy it. Thank you so much.
Man, you never let anyone tell you what your children cannot do. Because they're doing things a lot of us wouldn't even think to do because we can't. We can't even play an instrument. So bless them so that they can continue to do the good work that they've started. Look at the manifestation of their good work. So let's bless them. Amen. Now we're going to move to a part of the program where our souls are touched no matter what our denomination. There are some songs that are just universal, right? They just touch us all. And so we're going to ask Mr. Ricky Roberts. He's going to come and he's going to make this organ sing. He's going to make it do something I cannot do. He's going to make this organ sing. A song that is universal to all of us. Is that all right? Let's go to Mr. Ricky Rogers. Uh, let me first say good evening to everybody. Uh, I was sitting there thinking, and this is a definitely for me a song that everybody knows no matter what your culture, culture is. And but I was sitting there thinking how often times we sit and we hear and we absorb without really absorbing what it is that we're doing. The song says, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. You know that verse? Twas grace that taught my heart to fit, right? Then we're going to do this last little part that is say praise God. So I'm, I'm going to play these first two verses. And put if the Spirit touch you, and you understand how amazing His grace is. Don't just sit there and look at me. Because one thing we all know is His grace is sufficient. Anybody know that His grace is sufficient? So look at somebody and say, so when His grace is sufficient, look at them and say, we got to praise God together. How about that? Thank you. 
and so is his grace. Amen. 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 We can all attest to a remember our time that it was his grace. Mm -hmm. If it was not for his grace, yes. we would be consumed. Amen. But the Lord we serve, yes. he is on our side. Yes. And on our side. Yes. And on our side. We thank him for his amazing grace. Yes. I'm not happy to start up. So I'm going to keep on moving here. Now, this leads me into, you know, as a people, there's a group of us, you know, we have all our different denominations, but there's a group of us that's some hand clapping, foot stuff, tongue talking group of people. And so we're going to end the musical part with that group of people. We're going to ask them to come on. We've asked the Pentecostal group. Now, the Pentecostal church, I know you all have visited. They do call and response. They say something, we say something. And so when they do their part, we're going to do our part. And so because of what the songs are, our answer is always the same. So we don't have to know the song now, because our answer is always the same. Their call is different, but our response is the same. Amen. So we thank God for the Pentecostal, because they make up several different churches. So we just call them the Pentecostal group this, this afternoon. Amen. Let's give them a hand.
ZAC, you may be seated, and to uh, attorney judge, attorney, attorney judge, <laughs> Gilchrist Davis, and to all of you who make up the company of believers, unsaved if there be any, it's a blessing to be here. Amen. Amen. Uh -oh. I was supposed to get more volume than that. Amen. I said, it's a blessing to be here. Amen. Amen. There are many cemeteries, hospitals, right. jailhouses right. that each of us could be at. Yes, sir. But God has spared our lives and blessed us Amen. to be in this place on this day Amen. for such a special occasion. Amen. And I think we ought to just give God praise. I make it a practice of acknowledging the pastor of the church, but since that's me, I don't have to do that. And to the other ministers of the gospel who are here, I just want to give a few words of inspiration. And I underscore the word few. Uh, the Pentecostal bishop, the story is told, went to a Pentecostal church and quiet song like this one and the uh, folk were on fire and the Pentecostal bishop went to check on his church because of the new pastor there. He was about five minutes long, never raised his voice and after church the Pentecostal bishop said, uh, Pastor you were real brief today. He said, yes, Bishop, I thought it would be better to be brief than boring. He said, yes, but you were both. <laughs> so I intend to be brief, hopefully not boring. But just for words of inspiration, and then what are words of inspiration? I asked years ago a member, what was the difference between a sermon and a lecture? And that member who had been hearing me preach Sunday after Sunday said, a lecture has more information. Well, they've been hearing me preach every week, that kind of hurt my feelings. And so I decided not to ask what are words of inspiration, but I would assume they ought to be brief. And in 1 Samuel chapter 16, there is a word. I'm a preacher, so there ought to be a word. Amen. Verse 14, it says, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Then verse 23 says, And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took a harp and played with his hand, and Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. All right. When I read that passage, it just spoke to me on how God uses music. Yeah. Yes, sir. Won't you just say that for me? How God, how God uses, music. uses music. Come on, you can say it louder than that. How God, how God uses music. music. I got confidence in you. You can say it even louder than that. How God, How God uses, music. uses music. Nearly every movement has a music to it. Yeah. In the Old Testament, when the children of Israel were emancipated from Egyptian slavery, they sung the song of Moses. Mm -hmm. Exodus 15, they said, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. All right. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. They had some music to the movement. In the book of Revelation 15, it's presented, it's presented to us the song of the Lamb. Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. In the 60s, across the nation, but show enough in Birmingham, saints would march Singing, ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. They had a music to the movement. <coughs> mm -hmm. Our slave forebears and Reverend uh, Owens talked about 
this uh, signal songs where there were songs where they were code language so that they could sing them in the presence of the slave owner. Yeah. <laughs> the slave owner thought they were just talking about dying. Mm -hmm. But they were talking about going free. Yeah. They sung songs like Still Away. Yeah. Still Away. Still Away to Jesus. That means we're about to get up out of here. <laughs> they said some songs like Swing Low Sweet Chariot coming far to carry me home. Yeah. That meant that the Underground Railroad was coming. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. And then if they knew that the slave owner was around, they would sing stuff like Nobody Knows the Trouble I See. Mm -hmm. That means you better stay here right now. It was signal songs. Somebody say signal songs. Signal songs. And so God uses music. Our churches didn't have instruments. That's right. We got organ and piano and drums now. I remember the first church I pastored, I had to be bold to get some drum sets. But now we have instruments. We have multiple. But when we didn't have instruments, we sung metered hymns. Yes, sir. That's how that call and response got started. Some of you remember those metered hymns. Amen. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. And then the congregation would say, Guide me. instruments in order to sing because God uses music one way he uses music is for his people to communicate with him yeah. somebody say with him yeah. him songs of praise and worship we sing to him songs like we just did praise him Praise Him. That's singing to Him. What a mighty God we serve. Psalm 23. The psalmist opens up with the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me. He's talking about the shepherd. But midstream, he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. He stops talking about the shepherd. He starts talking to the shepherd. God uses music where we can sing to God. But not only does God use music where we can talk to him, but he uses music where we can talk to one another. You do realize that when we come to the house of God and we're singing, we're not only singing to God and before God, but we're singing to one another. That's why the music, and somebody said that earlier, the music is important, but the lyrics are important also. Because if the lyrics are wrong, I ain't singing. I think I'm going to say it again. If the lyrics are wrong, I'm not singing. I want to make sure that the lyrics are in tune with what my heart feels. And so when we sing, we sing not only to one another, but we sing also to God. But then music is used so you can sing to eat to yourself. Yeah, that means I can be in my car. I ain't got to have no audience. I don't have to have no crowd around me. I don't have to have a choir, but I can sing myself out. Yeah. That's really what the psalms are. Many of the psalms, they, they are psalms where they sing themselves happy. They start off in despair. They start off in depression, but they sing until they get happy. Amen. In fact, that's one of the hymns we sing. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. That's why the Bible says make a joyful noise unto the Lord, not a melodious noise, because some of you can't keep a tune. 
But just because you can't sing a tune, just because you can't stay on key, doesn't mean you ought not sing. If you got joy in your heart, you ought to have a melody coming out your mouth. Yes, sir. Yes. When we couldn't go to a therapist, when we couldn't afford a counselor, we sung songs to make ourselves happy. You know, one of the things that we often did, and we call them sacred blues in the church, there are some of those songs where are uh, 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 still away. We, we sung it this morning, and then in our morning worship, still away. That's a sacred blue, and nobody knows the trouble I see. That's sacred blues. But I'm not one of those preachers who believe the only thing you ought to sing is church songs. Yeah, yeah, I and mean, you don't either. You may pretend like you do, but none of you went on a honeymoon singing Amazing Grace. <laughs> we would reduce the population if on your honeymoon you were singing Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross. But when we couldn't go to a therapist and when we couldn't go to a counselor, we sung the blues. Yes, yes, man. yes man. Brother come home, find out his wife done left him. Yeah. She done run home with the deacon. He didn't get a pistol and go try to shoot him. He sung the blues. He said, I'm going down to the railroad. Lay my head up on the track. I'm going down to the railroad. Lay my head up on the track. And when that locomotive comes, I'm going to pull my big head back. He wasn't no fool. We sung the blues, but we also sung music that talked about love and romance. We, we ain't talk about this stuff like folk like Sexy Red. And those of you who don't know Sexy Red, don't worry about it. It's garbage. It's nonsense. Our young folk are hearing it. So if you got children, you got to know. I bet your children know who she is. But it's vulgar stuff. But we sung stuff and we enjoy music like it's for real. What I feel when I'm with you. Yeah, that, that makes you want to have a romance. It turns your nuisance into a romance. Because music, God uses music. And when God uses music, then you can come to the house of God and sing praises to his name. Our foreparents, and that's why I want to inspire you, CAC, to keep doing what you're doing, because our foreparents went through chattel slavery and Jim Crowism. They were called three-fifths of a person. They weren't given rights to vote. They were told to sit at the back of the bus. They were given put in schools that were not separate and equal. They were separate and unequal. But still, God brought us through. God allowed us to have pep in our step where we could say, before I'd be a slave, I'd be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. We would look at, uh, at the walls where newspaper was the wallpaper, but we said, I looked all around me, it looked so fine, I asked the Lord if it all was mine. And we could say things like songs of joy, celebrations, songs of, of victory, even in the midst of external defeat. We could say stuff like, I have so much. So much to thank God for. And yes, and if you know that one, that's the one I want to go to my seat on. I have so much, so much to thank God for. Somebody here today, you can sing that. I have so much. Some of you've been sick and you are here today. Some of you thought you weren't going to make it till God brought you out. Some of you had to cry tears of sorrow and God wiped your tears away. God wiped away your tears. But yeah, the, the clouds, the dark clouds from your human skies, but he dried away tears from your eyes. And you can say, I have so much, so much to thank God for. Yeah, he gives me victory. Yes, so much to thank God for. I dare somebody to just wave your hand and say, I have so much, so much to thank God for. 
preacher so I ain't gonna holler. But if I was a preacher, I'd say, hey, I ain't preaching, so I ain't gonna say it. But if I was preaching, I'd say, thank you, Lord.
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Two co-chairs. I am so delighted to see so many people out. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking about reflection of CAC, which was created in 1969. Yeah. And to look at this pool. You all represent everything that they vote on every Monday morning at 7 30 to unify this city and connect this city. And I'm looking at the connection now. I am so proud of this program mm -hmm. from the leadership that brought us a program last year. Mm -hmm. And now they're here again with a music that inspired so many people from the different cultures and the different presentation that we received this evening. I'd like to especially acknowledge Judge Attorney Charity Davis. And I don't know if y'all are beginning, but I the fit. Please keep that down in your mind because this is one of our family, CAC family. Yeah. I want to acknowledge all the CAC members that's in the house today. Please stand. Yeah. 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 Amen. And I want to just remind people, these great leaders of this city take time out every Monday morning to fall me in at 7.30 a.m. before mm -hmm. going to work to discuss how we can make Birmingham Metro a better place to live and a better place to play. Mm -hmm. So I am just grateful to have this type of leadership that I'm following. I can just say I need this in this step. I cannot Thank you all enough for keeping the spirit that we are multicultural history program. We want to be inclusive. We've been inclusive since 1969, and we stand there. I cannot thank the many things that we have been involved in. We just got through with the MFK Unity Project. And the these co chairs and Dr. Ward led us into a great success. We provided over 200 books on our education committee to celebrate Dr. King's birthday. And it was amazing. We had about two to 300 families turn out. And the young man that played today. He provided that type of entertainment to our kids. Amen. I'm so proud to have that relationship. Amen. So just to just say thank you. That's all I can say is thank you. Amen. And Charity, you do a good job every year. I can't wait to next year to see what you got up here. <laughs> thank you. Amen. that is a member of CAC before you leave today to just give us a token of thanks. Amen. Amen. I forgot to say, back in the bag, if you all look in the bag, we have the quilt, the quilt that the young people help us do for the MLK breakfast. And as many of you may not have come to the breakfast, but we would love for you just to go by and look at that good work that those babies did. That quilt represents the foot soldiers. The, um, you know, the soldiers who marched during the Civil Rights Movement. And so that quilt is a representation of that struggle that they were willing to take on for us. 
And so we will ask that you go by, but we do ask that you do not touch the quilt. Uh, you can admire it, but we, that you do not touch it because we don't want the oil from your fingers to, to you know, get on the quilt and, and make, kind of muddy it up. But we would love for you to go back and look at the quilt. It's right back there in the corner. Thank you, Amen. 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 Again, let's just praise God for CAC. It's been our pleasure to have you here. And uh, yeah, I wasn't having a slip of tongue when I said judge and attorney. I'm glad you straightened it out. I was predicting and hopefully prophesying. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Won't you stay? Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Eternal God, our Father, with thanksgiving we say to you, hallelujah. Hallelujah for the goal, the quest of unity, which is synonymous to the desire that your Son, our Savior, expressed in his high priestly prayer that we would be one. Thank you for CAC and their efforts to make that a consistent reality. Honor their efforts, we pray. And then, Father, as we make ready to leave this place, we pray that you would grant us traveling grace and arriving mercies we would find safe passage from this place to our various destinations. We pray that the love of you, our God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit would rest, rule, and abide now henceforth, even forevermore. These and other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring with the heart of liberty.
God of our silent tears. Thou who has brought us thus far on the way. Thou who has by thy might led us into the light. Keep us forever.